So here we'll talk about the G0, G1, G2 and G3 surface continuity. Now to understand the surface continuity, I'll start by making some sketches and for that I'm going to go to sketch panel and I'll start with spline, fit point spline and I'll select Y, Z plane and I'm going to make, well, this kind of spline and another one starting from here and there it is. So this is the spline. All right. Now, nothing fancy, just two simple splines. And now I'm going to extrude these splines using the surface tool. So I'll just click on stop sketch and I'm going to extrude it not using these 3D modeling tools. Rather, I'll use the surface tool. So I'm going to go to patch environment. So I'll go here and I'll select patch. Now here also we have the extrude tool which we'll use and using this extrude tool we can basically extrude the open sketches like this. So I'm going to go to create and extrude and I'll extrude this sketch in this direction and OK. So in this case we have two surfaces, these two surfaces touching at this edge or at this line and these two surfaces have G0 continuity. So basically G0 continuity is the position continuity or the contact continuity if you want to call it and they don't have very smooth transition when going from one surface to other they're kind of sharp like this. Now the best way to analyze this surface continuity is with the help of comb analysis tool which is again in the inspect panel. So here in the inspect panel we have the curvature comb analysis. I'm going to select it. And here we need to start by selecting the edges. So I'm going to select this edge and this edge. You can also select that edge. It's going to give you the same kind of result. Now, what we ended up with is the curvature comb. And let's try to understand this. Here, the turquoise lines are actually the radius lines of this curvature. So this thing is actually inversely proportional to the radius. So longer the curvature lines, shorter is the radius. So at this point, this line is pretty small. So that means the radius here is kind of large and then it started decreasing here and then again started increasing. Now here the radius is really very small. And if you just orbit this drawing here, you can see that here the curve is pretty sharp and that's why the radius is kind of small and then it started increasing and this almost looks like a straight line and that's why the radius is really very big here and as you can see here the comb lines or the curvature comb lines are really very tiny when compared with this one that's because the radius here is really big and these comb lines are inversely proportional to the radius so they'll be small here. Also, these comb lines are always normal to the surface. So in this case, they are pointing at 90 degrees to the point of contact of the surface. So wherever they are touching the surface, they are pointing at 90 degrees. So this is the visual representation of the surface continuity or the continuity of your curvature. You can also modify this comb using these options. So you can increase the density of these turquoise lines using this slider. You can increase or decrease it and you can also increase the scale of this curvature analysis comb like this. Now, as this thing is showing the position continuity here, we have this kind of angle at this point of contact. So the place where the, these two surfaces are actually touching, we have this angular shape and they are kind of breaking off at this point. Now let's click on OK and let's make other surfaces. So I'm going to click on new drawing and I'll go to sketch and spline and fit point spline. Once again, the same plane and the same kind of drawing. So here and from this point, we're going to make this. All right. Now, once again, we will extrude it using the patch environment. So I'll go to patch and extrude and well you know that this is once again G not continuity because of this sharp edge but now we'll convert it into G1 continuity using fillet tool so I'll go to modify and fillet and I'll select this edge 
all right and i'll just move this little bit inside so that we have a little bit of radius here that's approximately 18 mm that's good and now if you look at this fillet panel you're going to see here the continuity option and currently we are adding g1 continuity here we also have an option of adding g2 which we'll see in a moment for now i'll just select g1 continuity and okay this is what we are going to get so now this surface has this nice and smooth flow between this surface and this fillet and this surface again and actually this is the tangent continuity which is basically the g1 continuity so these two surfaces are tangent and these two are also tangent to one another now let's see how it looks in the curvature comb analysis so again i'll go to inspect and curvature comb analysis and again i'll select the three edges these three edges well in this case well these combs look kind of small so we need to increase the comb scale so i'm going to just increase it a bit here like this all right now you can see it clearly and i'm going to click on ok so what's happening here in this case once again the radius is pretty big here then started it decreasing and suddenly at this point the radius decreased abruptly now the radius here is really very small when compared with this curve and obviously you can see that this is really turning very sharply when compared with this one so it must have very small radius which is shown here with this comb analysis and once again in this surface the radius is gradually increasing and now the radius is kind of big when compared with this one so we have these smaller comb lines as the radius is inversely proportional to these comb lines smaller the radius larger will be these lines also at these points of contact if you just zoom into this area and look at this here the transition is although abrupt still there is no break between these two surfaces we have this line and the next one actually starts here and there is no angular gap between these two they are connected if you however check it and compare it with the g naught continuity look at this here we have this angular comb and we have some sort of angle here that's because we just have position continuity here we don't have that tangential continuity and that's why it's kind of breaking at this point which is not happening here in this case the radius is certainly increasing but the increase is tangential all right so g naught not so smooth kind of sharp edge g1 is well better than g naught and it has this tangential transition between surfaces and then we have g2 surface continuity let's talk about that next so i'll go to new design and once again i'll go to spline and the same plane and i'm gonna make well the same kind of spline and stop sketch and you know what we're gonna do so i'll go to extrude i'll select it extrude it and okay and once again i'll add a fillet here so i'll go to modify and fillet this edge and some radius here all right and in this case i'll change the surface continuity from g1 to g2 all right now you can clearly see something has changed here if you just change it to g1 look at this it's changing something here which is not very visible the change is kind of subtle but we'll see that using the curvature comb analysis so i'll click on ok we have g2 continuity again i'll go to inspect curvature comb analysis and we'll select it and once again the comb is kind of small so we need to increase the size of this comb and this is what we're going to get and okay so what do we have here so in this case not only these two surfaces are tangent but also they have the continuity of the curvature so they are obviously tangent these two and these two but apart from being tangent they also have same kind of curvature flow between these two and you can see that here in this comb analysis as well so here we have the comb but this flow is also not abrupt like g1 continuity here the radius is 
also now increasing gradually the change is not that sudden or abrupt as like the G1 so if you compare it with G1 just go to G1 look at this here it is obviously tangential the flow apparently looks smooth but here after this radius the change is abrupt and we now suddenly have this very small radius the radius is big here but now this very small radius and once again here the change is abrupt but that's not the case with g2 so here we have this big radius and then the next radius is again not that small and it's getting smaller slowly slowly and in a gradual way so this surface is a lot more smoother than g1 surface and that's your G2 surface continuity. So with Fusion 360, you can make surfaces which have G1 and G2 surface continuity. Now, let's see what G3 surface is and making G3 surfaces directly here is kind of a little difficult. So I'll use a different approach for that. And instead of making two connected surfaces, I'll use just a single spline in this case to explain the G3 surface. So I'll go to spline and fit point spline and I'll select this plane. And instead of making two surfaces, I'm going to now make just a single spline and obviously a single surface then. So I'm going to select the stop sketch and patch and extrude and this one and maybe I'll extrude it to this side or here also it's just up to you where you want to extrude it and okay and I, once again we have a surface but this time it's just a single surface there are no transitions or there are no connected surfaces here now again I'll go to inspect and curvature comb analysis and I'll select this edge and now if you look at this curvature comb analysis well here you can clearly see that the radius here is pretty big then it gets a smaller and then again big here obviously the transition is fairly smooth that's because we have just a single surface but even if you have connected surfaces and the curvature comb looks like this then that's g3 surface continuity so one of the most fundamental difference between g2 and g3 surface is the way curvature plot outline flows so this red line is the curvature plot outline and in case of g3 continuity it will also remain tangent so now if i just move back to my g2 surface continuity look at this here the radius is obviously changing in a gradual way there the change is not very abrupt but if you look at this red line the curvature plot outline you can clearly see that we have this sharp corner here and it's changing abruptly here so that's the g2 continuity and in case of g3 you will see this kind of smooth transition of this red line as well along with these radii which are going to change gradually this red line will also have a smoother transition so this is obviously the smoothest class a surface you're going to get with g3 surface continuity so that's about surface continuity so let's quickly review that here we have g naught which is the position continuity they are simply touching one another you can see that in the comb analysis then we have g1 here where the surfaces are tangent and then we have g2 where not only they are tangent but also they follow the same curvature at their point of contact finally we have g3 continuity which is the smoothest we have again the same thing they are tangent they follow the same curvature but this time they are really very smooth the transition is gradual and there are no sudden changes or bumps in the surfaces that's g3 surface continuity